are now less than one week away from Election Day in Kentucky, and at least one of the 120 counties in the Commonwealth will not be included on the State Board of Elections website on election night. And it's a pretty big one, too. It's Laurel County. Their primary election night complete results will not be included. Julia Sandor spoke to the Laurel County clerk to find out why. There's about 45,000 registered voters in Laurel County, according to County Clerk Tony Brown. He says after they already sent out the county's absentee ballots, they were informed by the State Board of Elections that they wanted their absentee results to be in precinct level form. When we sent out ballots, we only did it by ballot styles. We don't do it by precinct level, we do it by, by a ballot style uh, just to protect the secrecy of the vote. Laurel County won't be uploading their results to the Board of Elections website on election night. Instead, they'll be uploading it to their own website. It's a decision the county clerk says was made for voters' privacy. Typically, the State Board of Elections election night reporting website reports vote totals for the primary at both the county and precinct level. In a letter from the State Board to Brown, they ask that they set up their election machines in a way to report all ballot types by precinct on election night. The ballots that came back, we would actually have to open those and transpose them to a readable ballot for the, for the election. And to protect the secrecy of the vote, uh, talking with the county attorney and the Commonwealth's attorney, they said no, that's not advisable and advised us not to do it, so we're not going to do that. Right now, they're focused on having an efficient election. Tuesday, Election Day, it'll be a day of uh, making sure everything goes correctly, that everybody has what they need, that everything is going smooth in the, uh, in the voting centers that we have in Laurel County, and getting the results back and getting them out to the people as fast as possible. In Laurel County, Julia Sandor, WKYT. In that same letter referred to in that story, the state board says they were not forcing them as it is not required by law. Now, we reached out to the Secretary of State's office for comment, but they say the election results website is run by the State Board of Elections, so they do not have any control of this matter. Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron held a news conference today in Frankfurt announcing a new program implemented by his office called It Helps to Know. Attorney General Cameron says this program aims to protect Kentucky's kids from human tra trafficking and will help caregivers identify signs that a child may have run away, provide more resources to locate them and debunk the myth that those who run away are not in danger. Attorney General Daniel Cameron is also running for governor and is not scheduled to campaign here in the mountains again before Tuesday's primary. But the husband of another Republican candidate made a stop here in the mountains this afternoon. Joe Kraft made his way to his hometown of Hazard to campaign on behalf of his wife, Kelly Kraft. Kraft discussed Kelly's dedication to Eastern Kentucky, but also gave his perspective on her absence from the most recent Republican gubernatorial debates. If they were to have a civil debate, she would have been more than happy to be there. But it's not fair to the voters to be able to have a shouting match. So we elected to go ahead and just do a town hall, a tele-town hall, uh, that would give the voters the opportunity to hear her message. I would say she got 30 times many more questions she would have had had she, not, had she been in that uh, debate that night. Kelly Craft was scheduled to make stops in Rock Castle, Clay, and Boyd counties today, but will not be back in eastern Kentucky before the election. She will be campaigning with Texas Senator Ted Cruz on Saturday in Louisville and Richmond. Well, 15 candidates have put their name in the hat for governor in the primary. Twelve of those candidates are vying for the Republican nomination, while three, including Governor Bashir, want to represent the Democratic Party. Some of the other frontrunners in the GOP primary are visiting the mountains in the next few days. Agriculture Commissioner Ryan Quarles will be making stops in Whitley, Laurel, and Rockcastle counties tomorrow. Somerset Mayor Alan Keck will go on a 24-hour blitz across the state on Monday with stops scheduled in London, Manchester, Jackson, and Paintsville. We have reached out to State Auditor Mike Harmon and attorney in Northern Kentucky native Eric Dieters, but have not heard back from them 
as to their plans between now and Tuesday. Now, early voting begins tomorrow, and we received word that Secretary of State Michael Adams, who's also running for re-election, will be among those casting his ballot tomorrow in Louisville. Well, the weather is fantastic across the mountains as we go into this evening. Here's a live look right now in Pulaski County from downtown Somerset. As you can see, a sunny sky continues. That current temperature is 79 degrees. Most of us in the upper 70s and lower 80s at this hour, so very comfortable as we go into this evening as well. Up on radar, we are dry, and that will continue into tonight as well. So if you have any plans to maybe fire up the grill, the weather is fantastic. We stay dry under that clear sky. Temperatures falling into the middle and low lower 70s as we go later on into tonight. But those rain chances, they are not far away. They will return on Thursday and higher rain chances by Friday, also into Mother's Day weekend. All those details coming up in just a few minutes. More than 80 years after the death of a fallen police officer, John Ward's family had the chance to attend a special dedication ceremony. Yesterday, officials with the Moorhead Police Department dedicated a space in their station as the John Leslie Ward Community Room. Ward died after he was shot by a suspect in a hit and run chase back on May 9th, 1942. Ward was survived by his wife and nine children. A new program through the Mennonite Central Committee is offering a helping hand to the people of Elkhorn City and Pike County and its surrounding areas. WIMT's Buddy Forbes was there as workers cut the ribbon on a spaced focus on supporting needs. I pray this program is hid behind your cross and you get the glory for everything we do. With everything the July floodwaters took away. We've seen probably 28 people or so lose their homes completely and uh, a lot of other folks was affected and we had no means to really help them. They left behind a plan full of purpose. Being a home repair program director and not having a program in Pike County was very stressful to me. So with the help of community and congregation, <laughs> MCC Appalachia Swap, sharing with Appalachian people, was planted at Elkhorn Community Church. You know, we've got almost 20,000 square feet and uh, so, now it can be used to glorify God because we always want to be hid behind the cross. The church will now double as volunteer campus and mission headquarters for the program, which program director Kristen Overstreet says will bring in work crews to put boots on the ground for the home repair projects in the community where a helping hand is most needed. It means a lot to me just to be able to help people and knowing that people are not going to have to go to bed at night in an unsafe or an, an unwarm uh, condition that they can have a place that they feel good about. And while recent flood victims will take priority for the new program, the everyday needs in the area are substantial and SWAP is ready to serve. It's really eye-opening for me in this community to see as many people that really need help. So whether it is an access ramp or a remodel, the program invites those who can to assist and those in need to apply. That's our mission, is to provide safe, warm, and dry homes. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The crew at SWAP is still looking for volunteers to complete their building before their outreach volunteers begin pouring in for summer projects. If interested, you can contact Overstreet at 606-225-2289. FEMA has approved nearly $16 million for the Kentucky Division of Emergency Management in the wake of flooding last summer. The money will go towards utilizing contractors, rental equipment, and materials to provide supplies and commodities for those who were displaced. Materials will include mobile laundry, bathroom trailers, food and first aid kits, among other things. Due to the magnitude of the storm, President Biden has authorized a cost share reimbursement of 100% federal funding for the project. All work and costs were between July 28th and August 26th of last year. Applications for community develop development block grants are now, now open for those impacted by flooding in 2021 or 2022. WYMT's Jordan Mullins has more from the Big Sandy, where he spoke with officials in Floyd County on how these grants will impact the region. In March 2021 and July 2022, flooding impacted several communities across eastern Kentucky. It was a devastating event that we went through, 
It's changed our lives forever. It's, it's, it's changed the landscape of some of these communities forever. In Floyd County, many homes and families were affected twice in less than 18 months. Sadly, a lot of the people when we worked the flood in March of 21, I saw the same people in July of 22. So a lot of it's duplication. In late April, Governor Andy Bashir announced funding by the Department of Housing and Urban Development through community development block grants for disaster relief, adding that several counties were eligible. Floyd County is one of many where folks are now in the application process, hoping to receive help and stay in their homes. Being able to access dollars for folks to be able to, you know, to repair or even reconstruct their home uh, is going to be um, just a huge benefit for them. Homeowners are eligible for up to $200,000 to help rebuild their homes, which community leaders hope will help keep folks in their hometown. With the resources and the funding that's going to be available, it's going to afford us an opportunity to help these folks to get in quality housing here in Floyd County. And they'll have something that they, they, they'll be proud of and, and, a, and a new home going forward. And provide safe, quality housing for those across the region. In Floyd County, Jordan Mullins, WYMT Mountain News. Officials add that if you were impacted by the flooding in 2021 or 2022, you can contact your respective county's emergency management office for details on if you are eligible.